you guys are reversing in the cornfield. Sure are. There's corn yep. monsters on just... the car. Oh, <laughs> nope, no. nope, nope. There's just these miniature corns about maybe an arm's length, up to your hands, up to the tips of your hands. They have sprouted these arms from their husks, and they're just pounding on the glass trying to get in. You're lucky that the fibers of, of the husks are just not strong enough to really break anything. But man, are they trying. Oh boy. I'm choosing to think of them as cute. I'm choosing to think of them as cute. Do you, do you guys want to go ahead and roll me that sanity check no. that you have to do to uh, make sure that they are cute? Sure. Do I have to? Yo, I made it. For once. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Lizzie. Lizzie's not okay. Guys, Lizzie just got a hundred. They're not that cute. I was so close. I'm not okay either. Freddy's about to be in the insane asylum. No! Oh god, you're even lower on the thing than I am. Oh, we're all really low. Oh no. That'll be fixed too shortly. Or will it? Or will it? As the corn monsters are banging down the window. Everyone who failed, roll me a D four. I rolled a four. <laughs> Good job, Brad. I got a rock. I got a four. Oh no. <laughs> I got a two. Why are we? Why are we calling Good job, you to suffer? I think the I think the next um the next season they're gonna I'm gonna have you guys remake your character sheets in uh, pulp mm. fashion instead, so you guys can fight a little bit more against oh, the uh, a, horrors. Alternative versions. It's so much more I'm forgiving. Yes, there are a lot of combat in oh, pulp Cthulhu. Interesting. I yeah. didn't know there was a pulp Cthulhu. Learned a thing today. So Brian and Brianna, go ahead and deduct four from your character sheets. Ah! Two. <laughs> Puts me at 18. We're doing great, everyone. You guys are doing great. You know what? I'm at 16. I don't want to hear you complain about your 18. Yeah, we're doing great. I mean, I'm at 47. I'm relatively okay. <laughs> You're at 47? Oh, you stop. You get out get of here. Get a load of this you. one. So sane. <laughs> Look at all. The, look at the sanity on this one. Look at the resilience in the face of nightmare horrors on this one. The nightmare horrors aren't enough for Lizzie to be hurt. <laughs> Lizzie's a grifter. I'm so good at bullshitting people. I can bullshit myself into being sane. <laughs> Just fake it till you make it your mental health. <laughs> Basically, yeah. Okay. Apparently. So, you guys get out of the cornfield, and as you do, the corn monsters, like, they realize, oh, crap. Yeah. Where are the stocks? Yeah, they start burning. And so you just see these little corns with their little tiny feet hopping their way back oh. into the corn on fire and setting the corn field yeah. on fire. Oh, it's on fire again. Maybe next time we go through the door. Door is fine. Door is fine. <laughs> and then the truck stops oh. and dies. <sighs> Dunk head on the steering wheel. I turn back to look at the house. As you turn and look back at the house, you see a robed figure with a hood up. It's a green robe. God damn it. With a mm -hmm. wheel mm -hmm. embroidered on the uh, left chest. And you see her holding her hand out at the car. And she's having to lean on a cane as she's doing this. Did anyone tell Lizzie about Green Wheel specifically? I don't remember if Lizzie remember it was told about Green Wheel being connected to what happened to her dad, or just that there were people threatening him. I think I would have mentioned it when I mentioned the will reading and stuff. Because I did remember that, I just didn't remember any of the supernatural stuff. Yeah. So yeah, then we would recognize, oh, this is Green Wheel. Is that one of the assholes that got my dad killed? Certainly, but... Actually, wait, I shouldn't say we can take her. This is a dream. She might be, like, a three-headed guard dog or something. But if it's a dream, wouldn't we necessarily have the same abilities? Oh. Fair point. 
<laughs> Very astute. Yeah, no, I haven't been able to fly like I usually do in my dreams. But yeah, I suppose so. And do you guys pile out of the car? Cautiously, with my gun drawn. I was going to say, yeah, gun is drawn at this point. There were, there were corn monsters. Finley calmly walks out of the car. I see you've returned without the groceries. You lot had to ruin everything, didn't you? From wherever I'm standing, you're the one that ruined everything. I hate to be pedantic. You brought us in... Yeah, you brought us into your dream. Yeah. But you had to go and ruin it. You had to be the heroes. We just wanted to go on about our business. We didn't want to get stuck here and you're going to let us out. And then you're going to tell me what you know about who killed my grandpa. I always knew that young Ainsley was a fucking joke. Is she talking about my brother? I... Mm. Fuck, sight. Can we just kill her already? You see her hand drop and the car starts again and it just flies off into the cornfield and you just see these... As you see it drop into the cornfield, all of these corn monsters start like jumping on it and riding it out. Finley just wants to throw a rock at her now. Yeah. You can go ahead and pick yes. up a rock if you want. <laughs> Let us out of that here. That was such an excited little yes. God like, damn it! I was so close. No! <laughs> I was so close. No. Spend the luck. I will oh, spend no, the 22 luck. luck. I will spend the 22 luck for this. You could always push it. You got you got really lucky this time. You could always see if like, man, if I really. Will it to happen? Maybe it I will. Really want to throw a rock Are you kidding me? Yo! Oh! All right. As you as you try and will it, you throw it, and it just dissolves into birds. Oh, that's cheating! As she just waves her hands. Should have seen that coming, I guess. Can we leave now? Your dream is unstable. Us being here is ruining it for you. I can make it work. I just need you. I need one of you out of the way. That's all I need. You need to let all of us out. And who do you ma- who are you talking about when you say young Ainsley? That's none of your business. Is it my fucking brother? Is it that asshole? I'm going to actually kill him this time. I'm so disappointed in him. Oh, you get used to it after a while. It's just a state of being. We'll have to commiserate later. Let us out of your dream! But I'm shaking my fist. No, I I don't think I will. Who has the highest dexterity, by the way? Oh, no. Uh, I have 50. 50. I have a 50. I have a 35. Yeah! All right. All of you with 50s, <laughs> roll me dexterity. Cool and normal 50 dexterity. Oof. Oh, no! Oh, <laughs> no! <laughs> okay, so oh, for those wow. who aren't able to <laughs> what see is it, with the dice. We all have fifty, and we are world seventy-seven or seventy-eight. So you know, we're we're doing great at dream fights. Um, we would not survive Nightmare on Elm Street three Dream Warriors. We're doomed. <laughs> Gabriella and Lizzie roll again. Oh, even worse! <laughs> Woo! How is it still ending in an eight? Oh, That's what makes it more insulting. Yeah, we are Worse. cursed to be defeated in this dream. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That time is 98 and 88, so... Freddy, what would you like to do? Um, it is your turn right now. My turn. Cool. I'm trying to see what skills she got, because, you know... <laughs> uh, oh, no. What is my, what is my best best firearm skill and thingamajigger. I don't got really... Can I roll an intelligence to see if there's something we can use against her around us? Yeah. Okay. Okay, 52 versus 70. I made it. I succeeded. You start thinking and you realize your actions have directly caused the dream to be unstable. You deviating from thinking that the dream is not in your control to realizing wait a minute my force of will can be used here too and you think while she can probably deflect everything you throw at her after finley threw that rock and it 
turned into a bunch of birds, you realize that more and more of the landscape turned to the uh, dark and orange of the fire in the background. Cool. Right. She starts picking up rocks and hucking them and yells, Just distract it! Uh, distract Roy, distract it. We distract her enough, everything goes back to normal. Roll throw. Okay, roll throw. Oh, this is not going to go well, but. Mm, or is it? Haha! Shoot! Ha! Alright. Yeah, that's a failure. You throw the rock, and again, it gets dissolved, but this time you just see the flowers just dissipate off of it. Yeah, and she'll point to the flowers turning into the dark. See? Oh. And the sky starts to kind of turn a little bit more blue as you do that. Can I shoot her? Yeah, uh, you can try and shoot her if you like. Jesus! Hard success, 22 out of 70. You fire this gun, and as the bullet is right to the front of her head, the bullet turns around and goes straight into the ground. I will say I was, like, aiming for her arm, going to injure, not kill, but I imagine still same result. Still same result. As if the bullet was taken from the air where it was directed at to make a point as if it was going towards her head. But the sky starts to darken a lot more now. I mean, we either get out or we take her out with us. Next up, Gabriella. Since I'm getting the vibe that we're in dream logic right now, and I've studied that for a while, I try to, like, rack my brain. It's like, what are collective unconscious things that people are scared of? Oh, the beast. And I and I turn to Bosco, and I kind of want to will Bosco to become huge and, like, just to, like, scare her or, like, take her on. That sounds like fun. What would you say would be the role to make that happen? Oh, gosh. Um, I'm using my... Would it be psychoanalysis? It can be something different, because I know, like... I want you to use psychoanalysis, and then I want you to spend a magic point. I have those? We Yes, you do. You I have, have ten. six. <gasps> Ooh, I spend a magic point. I have eight. Yeah, I spend a magic point, and I succeed. Bosco gets turned into this large creature. Bosco actually looks like one of the bassy hounds that you saw in Oxford. Oh, like the spooky ones, yeah. Yeah. Since this isn't really Bosco, because I don't think dogs dream on the same plane we do. Uh, but I like I like that in my dream space, Bosco also exists. That is very nice. Yeah, I take Bosco and I shape him into my little monster. And Bosco gets shaped. Yeah, and I, and I turn to, to this lady. Here's the nice thing about dreams, is that everyone's fears kind of boil down to the same thing. Sick him. And I, and I tell Bosco to get her. All right. Bosco leaps at her and is turned into the tiniest puppy form of Bosco that you've ever seen and just runs oh. off yelping. Oh no, that's adorable oh, and upsetting. Okay, that was adorable. <laughs> it was so cute. Also, how dare you? All right, um, next up, Finley. Yes. So Finley's thinking, thinking, hmm, we're trying all these things that... Let's go with the unconventional, because what does Sherlock always say? Yeah. Finley's going to try to think of something that would, that is a, make this old lady scared. Okay. I want you to do psychoanalysis as well. I'm doomed. No. No. <laughs> For those of you who can't see, he has a one. <laughs> yeah. I think everyone has a one in psychoanalysis except for Gabriella. Oh, yeah. it's me. I'm the only dream warrior. <laughs> so you aren't able to conjure anything like Gabriella was, but spend a magic point for me, will you? I'm down to five. Cool. Tell me a little bit about your um about Finley's partner. Oh, about Finley's old about Finley's uh Old partner? Mm-hmm. Ah. Uh, oh. What was their oh, name? Oh, God, don't make me have to go through this. Oh, no. Okay, their, their name was Shoshana. 
Shoshana. And, well, she was around, but she's gone now. How did she die? Finley and her were following a lead that he thought was leading to his grandfather. It was about some interesting people from, I think it was from Oxford. And she disappeared. Finley doesn't know if she died or not. He was going to ask her to marry him. Oh, oh buddy. Is she confirmed it? So, that's because I get to have some fun with this, and I know how how the police and everything worked back then. They never found a body. All they found, what they assumed were traces of their blood. And they looked, and they never found a body, and they just said, hey, buddy, she's dead. This is the one case that's always haunting Finley now. So as you're trying to conjure what is horrifying to her, you end up conjuring what's horrifying to you. No. No. And you see Shoshana Mm -hmm. rise up from the ground as a zombie, clawing her way out of the ground. And you see her head first and her face face that she fell in love with decrepit as if half of it was just missing and you see the skull underneath and she starts ambling towards you you let me die oh Billy's arms just drop down to his sides he just drops to his knees real sanity ha ha Ha-ha. You made it. You made Grief it. is the best. <laughs> I do like that we give audio cues as to our, our, our roles much more readily than like any other games I've ever played. Right. Because every sanity roll is like, oh god, oh god, oh god. <laughs> yeah. You jump at this and you just feel dejected as this thing that just horrifying to you starts walking towards you, blaming you for its death. You guys see this, and as her turn comes around, you start seeing more and more of Shoshana rising up out of the ground, just clones, it seems, of her. And you hear, you start hearing this clicking sound. It's not real, Lizzie says to him. Like a train? As this large... No, not even large. This gargantuan spider oh, uh, crawls over no. the house. And you start to see the sky darken a little bit more. No! And there's only w- one sliver of light left. We just gotta do one more. Okay, cool. It's probably not gonna succeed, but can Freddy just, like, kind of run over to where the first Shoshana is? Is like, oh, fuck off, you bit. And, like, Spartan kick her back into the pit. Yeah, push her into the hole. <laughs> <laughs> this is part of her. Do it. All right, that's what brawl, right? <laughs> yeah, brawl. Yeah, no, doesn't work. No. <gasps> Oof. You try and kick her, and she grabs your leg, and uh, you get thrown onto the ground. Oof. And the sky starts to light up a bit more. Oh gosh, okay. Can I shoot her again? <laughs> Go ahead. You're really making like I, I got gun training, but maybe I should be making more use of it instead of I have no psychoanalysis, so I'm just gonna I'm true. just gonna shoot. Extreme Ooh. success! Whoa. Six out of seventy. Guns <laughs> are the most powerful move in Call of Cthulhu. How would you like to do it? Oh god. At this point I'm like, to hell with this. We need to get out of here and I I just Go for center mass. We're getting out of here. Okay, roll damage. I got an eight. Okay, you shoot her center mass, and the bullet goes clean through. And she drops to her knees first. And she holds out her hands as if she's trying to get these zombie Shoshanas to lunge at you, to just take you down to the ground, to get some form of control over this dream back. And it doesn't happen. And you see the spider above her. And she looks up as it. As it comes down, pins her to the ground, wraps her up, 
and starts draining her. Ah. Ew, 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 ew. And then vanishes as she falls a corpse to the ground. And all of a sudden, the world starts to shake. There's a tremor. I really hope that's what we were supposed to do. The house starts to crumble to the ground around you. The fields are on fire. The train off in the distance is on fire. Everything is on fire. It's like I said, we're in hell. The ground starts to open up beneath you, and you see these dark pits. And you hear, Squeak, squeak. Squeak, squeak. And... Father Blackwell? Freddy, you get smacked in the face by a mouse <laughs> as one of the father mice just wallops you to wake you up oh you're such a little fuck and you're on the train and the sky is bleak and you realize you're back in England and all of you start waking up to this and these blue mushrooms just drop off your heads Oh. Freddy just takes great pleasure in grinding one under her boot heel. They groan. I examine them. Do they look like the ones I've dealt with in the past? Just a different color? Yep. Oh god, it's yep. back. I'm killing my brother. I'm going to kill him. Didn't he message us to duck? I'll help. If he's on their side, he's really bad at this. <gasps> oh, he's really bad at this. He was trying to help, and he was with them. He told us to duck, and then all that happened. Oh, did he trigger the nightmare then? That seems a little, and pardon me for saying, above his pay grade. Which lady also mentioned something about the younger Ames- Amesley. It's just me and him left. So we should be paying him a visit when we get to town. Yes, we should. Mm, well... He was my contact in the society before, but I think I can say he's done a lot more harm than good to me lately. I do think we should probably get more information first on what's going on. That or whiskey. Then you hear squeak, 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 as the father blackbone mouse is like pointing towards the door. Hand goes to gun. Yeah, same at this point. <laughs> I think Freddy only has a knife, so just reaches behind their back and pulls it out the sheaf. Yeah, really tapping into my American sensibilities <laughs> now. It comes to your attention that if someone was to put you under that spell, they would have to still be on the train. Oh, that old lady's still here. Should we go find her? Yes. I'm sure we have plenty of questions to ask her. Yeah, Freddy will throw open the door. As we get ready to head out, I do turn to Finley. The woman. You don't have to get into it, but I'm sorry. Thank you. I'm going to need a bit. Well, if it helps, the person who um, allowed that to happen to your psyche is on this train and is very much mortal and not immune to bullets. I know revenge isn't technically psychologically viable as a coping skill, but can be sometimes. Oh, I... Trust me, I am... I am with you on that. Let's go get some revenge. And answers. Answers too, but revenge also. And I pet real life, not dream Bosco. And Bosco, you see, had a uh, mushroom on him as well. <gasps> he was in the dream too! Oh, I'm so sorry, I should have never sent you into combat. That was really... That was so rude of me. He licks you and uh, motions towards your um, treat peck. Oh, I give him a little treat. He did so good in that dream. <laughs> and then he runs out the door and starts uh, down the, bounding down the train. Oh, heck yeah. We take off and follow. Yeah, we, we, fo we follow the dog, the dog. Scooping up the mice. You see the Doberman just sniffing on the ground. And then you change cars over one. And... He's just sniffing at one door. Would you like to open it? Sure. Is there anyone yeah. else in this cart but us, like out in the hallway right now? Nope. Good enough. 
The door gets yeeted open. Hand is still on my gun. It's not actively, like, obviously pulled out. But I'm ready if I need to. All right. You throw open the door. And all of a sudden, you hear a click. And you see a hooded figure on one of the benches in there. And she looks at you with just wide eyes staring at you. And you just see this foam start coming out of her mouth. Oh, no, 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 no. And Freddy's going to run over and, like, force her jaw open. As a book falls on the ground. Lizzie looks at the book. Good job. You lose sanity. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone knows books are evil. I have the most sanity. Yeah, I mean, yeah, if anyone's going to look at a cursed nightmare book, I would rather it be you. No offense. As you take this book, you open it, and it gives you a whole bunch of information compiled by the Edinburgh sect of Greenwheel. Mm. And inside is a letter. I look at the letter. It is addressed to someone just named Gina. It is written in a script you can't understand, but it is from Adam Wesley. Ainsley. Took the letter and the book in my bag. We need to get to a drift, drift and train car. We need to get away from here. Back to our car or somewhere else. Maybe somewhere where there's more people. Right. Where no one will, will be asking questions as to why we're here alone with a corpse. <sighs> Can I quickly loot the body for anything valuable or that looks shiny? Pros by hidden. That phrasing feels weird in a non D and D context. Ooh, right. <laughs> it does, it but does. at the same time. I mean, it's true. We might find something important. Oof. Yeah. No. There's nothing really of use to you. You find that this person has like a wand-like thing, but you decide that that's probably not going to be any use to you. Yeah, she probably just looks at it and just breaks it and moves on in the effort to try and find stuff. All right. Come on, we need to move. Get to the dining car. Yep, yep, yep. You guys get to the other cart, and no one notices you. No one's paying attention, it seems. The mice are in your pocket, Freddy. So, is we could just count that more strange mushroom ladies and dream bints? When I was at Amesley Manor, I dealt with something similar. It wasn't the dream but there were mushrooms that could eat away at entire bodies and that affected the mind and what of it I can remember it had to do with an entity that was worshipped by the green wheel it seems that they're back up to their old tricks that book was compiled by one of their groups I'm not going to take it out now we, we need to stay where there are people and not talk about Delora off the train. Absolutely. You don't send someone in to do recon or distraction alone. Or stop us. I like use a stiff drink. <laughs> yes, I think we all could. You guys drink a bit, and it's a long trip to Edinburgh. You have been listening to Beyond the Crumbling Veil, a Call of Cthulhu 7e actual play podcast by Styx Helix Productions, as part of Pseudonym Social, a creative podcast network changing reality one story at a time. If you're enjoying this show, please consider leaving us a review on iTunes or Podchaser or wherever you're listening to help other people find this lovely spooky tale. Beyond the Crumbling Veil is DM'd by John Bowman of Styx Helix Productions, with Brian as Finley Jaeger Lazarus, Ian Ramos as Gabriella Slaughter, Fennec Foxfire as Frederica Newman, and Brianna Jean as Charlene Elizabeth Amesley. The show is also produced by Brianna Jean. If you don't want to wait to find out what happens next, you can get early access to our episodes by joining our Patreon at patreon.com slash pseudonymsocial. 
You can also find out more information about our other shows at pseudonymsocial.com and support our various productions.